Okay, in this problem, you're told a disk of radius r has a uniform surface charge density sigma that's given to us. Uh, calculate the electric field at point P that lies along the central perpendicular axis of the disk and a distance x from the center of the disk. Okay, so you are given the radius of the disk. You're given the surface charge density, which is in coulombs per meter squared, right? Because it's surface charge density, not linear charge density. X is the distance from the center of the ring to P. All right, so let's look at this in a little bit larger picture. We've already looked at the field due to a charged ring. Well, now we're doing the field due to a charged disk, which is really just a bunch of concentric rings. Each ring has a charge Q. Okay, and we have to we define dr as the thickness of each ring, r as the radius of each ring, capital R as the maximum radius of each ring or the radius of the disk, and x is the distance to p. I will also add another thing on here. H is the linear distance from point p to dr. Why h? Well, because we have so many r's floating around, uh, so I couldn't call this r again. And of course, we have x down here. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the charge due to each one of these rings, and we're going to sum all the rings from r equals 0 to r equals capital R. The first thing to note is, here's a smaller diagram, h is the distance from p to dq. That We are, already mentioned that. Okay, so if we look at the definition of, or well, the equation for the electric field due to point charges, H equals K uh, Q over H squared. That is, that is what would happen if we had a point charge R X H. So this Q and this is P. That would be the equation. Of course, we do not have a point charge. We have um, a distribution of point charges. So what we're going to have to do is put this in differential terms of DE equals K DQ over H squared. I'm leaving off the unit vectors for now. I mean, that's fine. I can add it at the end. Um, so this means that every differential charge element, DQ, along here equal, uh, uh, creates this electric field DE. So what is DQ? We don't know what DQ is, but we know what the surface charge density is. So we can say DQ equals surface charge density times DA. In other words, the coulombs per meter squared, if you take that and multiply it times the area meter squared, you get the coulomb charge, right? Okay, so what is dA? We have to expand that because we don't have that. So dQ equals surface charge density sigma times 2 pi r, which is the, the circumference of one of these uh, circles, times dr, which is the thickness of the ring. So yeah, the circumference is going to have some span, but since we're talking about infinitesimally small, infinitesimally thin rings, uh, we don't have to worry about that spread of R. So it's just 2 pi R, the circumference, times the thickness of the ring. So I'm going to take that here. DE equals K times, I'm going to put this in parentheses, sigma 2 pi R dr, all over H squared. Move that down so it looks a little better. Well, one thing we have to look at is just like before, you're going to have elements of the of the electric field pointing up and pointing down at an angle theta. You can break that down into components, and of course, all of the um, the y components cancel out because for every one component up there is, you have one component down. So you end up with just you know, for these two differential field elements, you would end up with just twice the uh, the uh, 
electric field in the x direction, which is just going to put that cosine theta. I, that, that too is probably going to confuse everyone. Erase that. Dex equals de cosine theta. Okay, so I'm going to say that this is, um, so I, I'll write here, dex equals k sigma 2 pi r dr over h squared and dey equals 0. Well, what is h squared? We can expand on that. R over h squared is x squared plus r squared. Well, oh gosh, um, I forgot the cosine of theta. Sorry, guys. What well, what is cosine of theta? Cosine of theta, where this is theta, is adjacent x over hypotenuse x squared plus r squared. So this is x over x squared plus r squared as cosine theta. I'm sorry, it's the square root of x squared plus r squared. Let me write it out here. Cosine theta equals x over the hypotenuse, which is the square root of x squared plus r squared. Okay, so we can now uh, make this a little prettier, I guess. Say dex equals k, uh, bring that to k lambda pi r uh, dr times x over x squared plus r squared to the 3 halves because it's 1 plus 1 half power so it's just 3 halves power okay well we're integrating with respect to r so I need to group all the stuff I actually have to integrate and let me write that one more time dex equals lambda pi x, I brought the x over, and then that leaves me with r dr over x squared plus r squared to the three halves. Oops, oh, I'm so sorry, I fell off the page. Okay, so if we want to find the electric field, that's just going to equal the um, the electric field in the x direction because there is no y component. So that's going to equal the integral of uh, oops, of dex, which is the integral of all this stuff. None of this stuff matters because it can be pulled out. Two k sigma pi x, x is fixed, remember. So this is the integral from zero to the radius of the disk of r over x squared plus r squared three halves dr. So this is a complicated integral. There's a video that I've posted that's pretty good on u substitution. I would suggest looking at that. Um, but I'll show you how to do it here. I'm just going to make this substitution that says u equals x squared plus r squared. And if I make that substitution, then du, the derivative of u with respect to r, remember I'm differentiating this with respect to r, is equal to Oops, not x squared. x squared is just a constant. I'm differentiating with respect to r, so that goes away. So this equals 2r. Or du equals 2r dr. Or, maybe I should write it the other way. Mm. 
well, I'll just write one half du equals r dr. See why I did that? So this can go in here, but then I've still got this r in the numerator that's going to be a problem. Well, I can get rid of it using this. So E equals 2K sigma pi x, God, that's a lot of constants, times the integral of, remember, U, U to the 3 halves. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and put this in the negative 3 halves. I, I find it easier to think of integrals that way. U to the negative 3 halves. Now, here we have r dr, so r dr can be substituted in with 1 half du. Oops. So now I have the integral of u d. I can, I can integrate this with respect to u. But since I put, did this u substitution, I also have to do the same thing with the limits, because here it's implied that r equals 0 to r equals uh, capital R. Now it's something different. <coughs> so if when r equals 0, u equals 1 uh, x squared. And when r equals capital R, u equals x squared plus r squared. So we have now a simple, we're integrating a, a relatively simple polynomial. First thing I'm going to do is notice that the 1 half cancels out the 2 over here. So k sigma pi. Uh, x. Now the integral of u to the negative 3 halves, remember that's going to be, we're going to add 1 to the exponent, so it's u to the negative 1 half, and then we have to divide by whatever the leftover exponent is. And that's evaluated from x squared to x squared plus r squared. Now negative 1 half in the denominator, that's the same as saying negative 2k sigma pi x and now we have u to the negative one half that's one over square root of u so that's one over the square root of x squared plus r squared minus uh, one over the square root of x squared so that's just one over x now I'm going to do a couple things I'm going to distribute out this x to each side because this is going to cancel out with nice. I'm also going to distribute this to that side. And whenever you have a negative, you can just flip the order of the binomial. So that gets rid of the negative. So E equals 2K sigma pi. Um, remember, these. this is flipped. And this becomes x over x. So that's 1 minus square root of 1 over x squared plus r squared. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, the x is distributed to here, too. So this is the nice, neat, simple answer.